Empire's programme as we go behind the scenes at Bradford City. The programme contains strong language. It was the season Bradford City dared hardly dream of. The club so used to being also Rams had glory within its grasp. The stadium, once touched by tragedy, had become transformed. Success at last in the Valley of Dreams. At the start of the season, I thought um, we'll finish mid-table. But after the start we had, then I thought we might get relegated and Paul Jewell might sadly lose his job. In the FA Cup run, Bradford started well with a win against Grimsby. Was there more to this side than some believed? But I think all fans thought that after, uh, after the start we had, we just thought, oh, it's going to be another long, long season. The next FA Cup match seemed to confirm that view, a 3-0 defeat for Bradford. After a while, lads started to turn it round a bit. I think it was Birmingham away when we got his first win away. And from then, things have looked up and then Sunderland came along. Bradford had not seen top flight glory for more than 70 years. A victory against fellow promotion hopeful Sunderland would give them a crucial boost at a critical stage in the season. The significance of this match was lost on no one, least of all Bradford's manager, Paul Jewell. OK, that's a big game tonight. Fantastic game for you to fucking play, you know? If we fucking sit back and let them play, He'll murder us. If you go on, as you're after all the rest of the season, we'll get a result tonight, I'm telling you. It's greasy, it's going to be a night of mistakes. Make sure we don't make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. With each passing week, promotion to the Premier League was becoming more than just a dream. We haven't come this far, Paul Jewell said later, only to throw it all away. Come on, Jamie! Come on! Right, there's ten of you out there fucking having a go. And as you, like a little sulking, don't want to fucking know. If you want to get you back every afternoon, every night to get you going again, eh? You're not sulking. That's your fucking mate. You're sulking. Look at you now. It's up to yourself. If you want to play, you can play. If you don't, you can come sit with me. You're a fucking great footballer. You can win this game. But on this night, there was little left to give. Sunderland were already flying high at the top of Division One. Bradford City could only watch them do it. So here comes the corner from Sunderland again, and it's a goal! Would you believe it? Guess who scored? Niall Quinn, alone for a moment. Had Jewel any regrets about his half-time onslaught? Uh, no, not really, because it's, that's that's the way that's the way I am. I, I, you know, you say things sometimes that he's at a moment. I think I think people inside of football uh, can accept it more than people maybe outside of football, because I suppose if I if uh, I spoke to the boss spoke to people like that at a normal job. There'd be an awful lot of things to be said. There'd be trouble. But footballers accept it. Emotions at the Valley Parade ground had been growing stronger by the match. The man with the money, the club's chairman, had been suffering along with the rest. 
it's been nerve-wracking um, the, the last few months. Uh, there is a lot of pressure. Um, the mood swings almost from game to game. Watching the games is extremely difficult. I, I've always loved watching football, but watching games at the present time with so much at stake it is, is really 90 minutes of torture rather than 90 minutes of pleasure. We would probably treble our turnover by getting promotion. And I can't think of any other business uh, in a business sense where one event could so dramatically increase uh, the, the outlook, the future outlook for the club. Bradford City supporters uh, have seen a lot more bad times than the good times. They've also seen deep tragedy. And I think that if we were to get promotion, it would mean so much for so many. The rebuilding of Valley Parade is an important symbol to fans who have kept faith with their team. 14 years ago, a fire in the stadium killed 56 people. The new stand is seen as part of the club's continuing healing. How's it going? We're about halfway so far. It's also part of the great dream, which could take the once lowly club into football's golden acres. Bradford sites have long been fixed on a place in the Premiership. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable view from here, isn't it? Oh, yes, so we're only half a so the atmosphere up here now, yes. um, before we could feel the atmosphere the other Saturday, they were fantastic. At stake are the dreams of thousands and thousands of the supporters of our club who have probably dreamt of the day which um, is so near. Uh, it's a huge responsibility knowing that so many people's lives are going to be so affected by our final destiny th this season. With only hours to go to this season's transfer deadline, a star signing to strengthen the squad from the Italian club Sampdoria, where he'd been on loan from Leeds United, the England international Lee Sharp. Expectations at Valley Parade were high. Sharp was seen as an important part of the ambitious plans to create the kind of team to succeed in the Premier League. With his dad for support, the player was about to enter a new chapter in his career. But as the minutes passed, the red tape became increasingly difficult to unravel. A three-way conversation between Sampdoria, Leeds and Bradford had become bogged down in detail. Go, oh, Michael. All they could do at Valley Parade was wait, and with the press anxious to interview the new arrival, the paperwork was still incomplete. Last time we had something like this was Millsy. We had Millsy on there Friday before we were playing Stockport, first game of the season. So he's in there, his agent's in there, so he comes back and says he wants the weekend to think about it. It's a minute to 12, he says, so, no fucking chance, there's no chance. So he comes back, give us a quick sign, won't it? Yeah. So it was like, we had a sweating on here, because it was about eight minutes past 12, it went through in the end. It was frantic, absolutely frantic. With time running rapidly short, the crucial documents came through. A new star had appeared at Valley Parade. You're just in there. That's it. One thing you'll never lose or win. <laughs> no goals. <laughs> Get no goals. There's going to be a lot of draws. <laughs> Welcome back. Last time I saw you, we were walking down the front in uh, in Italy. 
in Genoa near the seaside and all the rest of it. Yeah. But now you find yourself in Bradford. That's right, just a little bit different, but uh, hopefully I'll be playing a little bit more football here than I was in Genoa. Away from the spotlight, it was business as usual. All you gotta do is bounce it. See just what goes where. Played a lot of games this year, so it's important to try and keep it as fresh as we can. There ain't no way around it. So I have come well prepared. Now, the most important thing for us at this present time is get to the points on Saturday. <laughs> I think between now and the end of the season, you know, there's there's going to be, you know, twists and turns as there always is when it gets this close. It's for the stars, sort of thing, reach for the moon, and uh, you know, you might not get there, but you get as high as you can. Jamie, your friend is going to get it. At training, thoughts had turned towards the next match against big rivals Huddersfield. If the players didn't appreciate the significance, they soon would. So just let him have a play. Fucking stop it going in. Make the ball's going. Hang on, hey. Hey, hang on, Millsy. Make the ball going in the fucking box on a Saturday. We stop it. Nothing would lift Bradford more than a victory now. This would be a home derby like few others. Whenever Huddersfield came to Valley Parade, the air was tense and the matches electric. This would be one to savour. We need three points, simple as that. Um, Huddersfield have beaten us already once this season, so we need revenge for that. Hurry up! In every Bradford faithful's home, an unmistakable sense of occasion. So much was at stake. Times like these brought out the essence of being a Bantams fan. Look at Bradford, here we have got a massive city. It's got nothing going for it, it's got nothing. The only thing we've got for it is, is, is the football club. And so, so you know, we're, we're rightly proud of the football club. That's, that, that's all we've got to, to show for it. This year, there's like a nervous tension all the time. If you don't win 3-0, you're disappointed. Tough. You expect to go out and hammer them. And if we don't win 5-0, who will achieve what we're capable of? Thank you. All the supporters, all the supporters that have lived through it all the years and lived through all the ups and downs have made a commitment to the club. It's their club. It's not anybody else's club. It's not the manager's club or the players' club. It's, it's, it's our club. In the visitors' dressing room, the determination was equally strong. It was beginning to look very much like Bradford's match. Robbie Blake now, forward, Robbie Blake, and it's there! Robbie Blake for Bradford City, and he scored in all the last four games! The tension was as high off the pitch as it was on, and everywhere, it seemed, temples were getting frayed. for Rob Edwards, oh, it's an equaliser, and it's come off the underside of the bar. Rob Edwards, oh my God. it's the goal scorer, Marcus Stewart, who scored it, I think, but it's this extraordinary equaliser there, right against the run of play, and Huddersfield a level. The argument started outside, continued inside. Fuck it, man, we're all over the fucking place, with. 
It's a typical local derby game, uh, blood and thunder, if you may say so, and uh, everyone's trying to get one over each other in a game like this. But uh, as far as derby games concerned, you don't get much fire than this one, do you? I can't fucking believe it. I cannot fucking believe it. Sharp on the far side, Lee Sharp going forward, a little cross from him, everyone there! Oh yes! And it's Dean Windows, his first goal in a Bradford City shirt at home, his third for the season. A penalty gave Bradford the chance of an equaliser. Could it be that Huddersfield, of all teams, would deny them their greatest opportunity? Only time would tell. Bradford City to make it 3-3. Here comes Windus. Oh, it's saved! Nico Barson has saved it! It's an aggressive game, football, and it's a passionate game. Um, and I get disappointed when things don't go our way, but, you know, at the same time as, as being aggressive and being angry, sometimes you have to, in the next breath, be sympathetic and put your arms around people. It's part of football management, it's part of any management, really, any man management. And um, that's the way I am, it's the way I'm, the, I'm made, and I, I can't change that. I've just got to try and get the best out of the way I am to get across to the players. Time was not on Bradford's side. At least the journey to London to face Queen's Park Rangers would give them the excuse to forget the mounting pressures. Blake, are you not playing for thousands like normally? Nah. <laughs> you know, it's obviously a long journey down to London. You know, you're looking at three and a half hours or depending on traffic, four hours. So you need to um, keep your mind in view. Sometimes the lads bring some good videos, but then again, uh, sometimes it does. So <laughs> you've got to do something. There's a lot of tension, you know, don't get me wrong when you're playing, you know, because. You know, you, you, you know, you're fighting for your life, and you know, three points. That's all. It, anything less than that, and it, you know, it's at this stage of the st season. You know, it, you don't really want. You need three points every week. You know, and I think that's the pressure going into games where you know that you've got to win at this stage of the season. I'm like a 23-year-old now. You know, and I think everyone's ambition is to play in the Premier League. And that's where everything is at the moment, isn't it? It's the Premier League. It's not the, the first or the second or the third. It's the Premier League. That's what ev all the newspapers is. It's nothing else. Is it? It's just the Premier League, and it's the elite of the elite, really. And that's what we're all aiming for, and that's what we want. Well, I think it was about six weeks ago my dad passed away. And about a week before he passed away, he was always saying to me, you know, I hope you do make it in the Premier League and things like that. It'd be nice just to play in the Premier League, although he won't see me play there. It'll just be nice that no, I've made it for him, you know. Automatic promotion was looking less likely after Huddersfield, but the City fans were determined to keep their dream alive. We missed three we matches this season. Can't do that watching them on a Saturday. If we, didn't think, if we didn't think we were going to go up, we won't be sat here. The whole town is geared up for this now. We're on an absolute high. The city is rocking. We're ready. Come on, the Premier League. We can't wait. <laughs> 
At grounds up and down the country, relegation and promotion battles were about to recommence. In another match, Ipswich were fighting for the same promotion spot as Bradford. Here, the next 90 minutes would become yet another emotional roller coaster. It's taken by Lee Sharp, who finds Wally in the penalty area. Blake, good first touch to Beagrey. It might break for a shot from Beagrey. Left-footed, Peter Beagrey gives Bradford City the lead from 15 yards. Tenacity and persistence on the edge of the box. And what a strike. It's Queen's Park Rangers nil, Bradford City won. By half-time on one of the warmest days of the year, the heat was on for Bradford. You've worked your socks off, you've got your 10, 15 minutes rest now, you've got to go out there and you've got to do it again. He's going everywhere with you, right? You're losing too many down the edge of the box. See what comes at you there, you've got all of it, and the big has made a run, you give him it. Now, if people are facing you, this goes for anyone, if someone's facing you there and you're there, just give him it. Let's give him, let's keep the, the game simple. Let's just give him it, put your throws, let's try and get them on a the full, because it's difficult for those strikers to fucking control them when it's bouncing up, when it's bouncing up. And right at the end there, they've got a throw in, you two again have knocked off, they took a throw in, and then they've got a corner. Don't go, T. C, beans, beans, go, C. Go on. Go on. Go on. Press ya. Press ya. Peacock sends it in from the right side. Slade with the header in there, but Beagrey's in with the challenge. Maddox knots it in, and QPR have pulled one back through Kevin Gallon. It's Queen's Park Rangers 1, Bradford City 2. On the touchline, the language was beginning to cause offence. OK, OK, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Gary Walsh takes the free kick, both sides down to ten men. Great work from Gordon Watson to chest it past the defenders. Watson's in the penalty area, and Watson has scored a sensational third goal. What a strike from Gordon Watson. The ball, he controlled it with his chest. Get in there! The Premier League was looking closer for Bradford. Hey, Big, well work, son. Well work. Well done, lad. Well done, Scarfy. Well done, sir. Well done, Dino. Hey, well done, son. Come on. Fucking well done, son. Fucking brilliant, well done. Oh, Big. Hey. Fucking magnificent, son. Well done. Well done. The jubilation was intensified by news that Ipswich had lost their match. No, football's a funny game this time. Last week we were on the floor being beaten by Huddersfield. Today, you know, it's back in our hands, but, you know, we'll enjoy it tonight, but we know there's a long way to go, yeah. And there's twists and turns left in this, and let's hopefully, um, we can get two victories to, to clinch it. It was their day, the Bradford fans, players and chairman. But it was at their very last match against Wolves that Bradford would discover their destiny. But I think Bradford deserve it really over the season. I think we've played the better of the uh, game. There's not even words. It's just there, isn't it? Just there. Only 30 years now following Bradford. It'll just be a dream come true. The pre-match carnival was tinged with unsettling tension as celebrations were brought to a sudden halt. The chance here for Emblem. Emblem gets the header on, it's back going up the bar, and the header is in! And would you believe it, the goal score is harmless slow! Wolves are ahead, and we've played 12 and a half minutes. 
Wolves were fighting for promotion too. It felt like the prayers would go unanswered, but they didn't. Lovely play from Bigri. Peter Bigri in a good position here. Bigri with chance. Bigri's got past one man. Bigri has equalised! Oh dear, a little bit of trouble here. A chance for Robbie Blake to do something. Robbie Blake still forward. Robbie Blake! 3-1 Bradford City! But then a Bradford penalty was saved and Wolves scored a second goal. Word reached the Bradford faithful that promotion rivals Ipswich were winning their game. City had to win. A draw would deny them automatic promotion. As the Bradford hearts beat faster, time seemed to stop. Seconds to go here. Has he blown it? He has blown it! Yes, it's the end! Bradford City into the Premiership for the first time in 77 years! This is what it's all about now, I can't believe it, I just can't believe it, it's frightening. The Premier League now anyway, how does that feel, Premier League? Well, I probably feel, feel a bit better with a few beers like, but uh, it feels good. And cigars flying about, boys. Come on, it has to go These and many more embarrassing versions of God Save the Queen on one great album. Now that's what I call the national anthem. The question is. That yes. we all of us yes. have to change our lifestyles. Well, I haven't got a lifestyle. I, <laughs> I spend all day in the pub. <laughs> Look, how many times do you go to the lavatory in your house? Well, that's hardly my idea of a lifestyle. <laughs> no, no, it's about conserving our natural resources. Mm. Come on, how many? Well, since Muriel's had a problem, about once every 20 minutes. <laughs> well, that's a colossal waste. It's... Drew is whatever you want. Yeah! And at 10 to 8, Brian Conley's got your number on the National Lottery draw. Be there. Just some of the highlights for Saturday on BBC One. Putting dogs on their best behaviour. BBC One's in Battersea in half an hour. to changing rooms from the little village of Denford in Northamptonshire and it's a load of cobblers this week by that I mean their neighbours are Mr Smith the shoe designer, Mrs Smith the shoe shop owner, Miss Smith the shoe shop manageress and her boyfriend who's got nothing to do with shoes apart from wearing them. Sandra and Cliff Smith will be saying goodbye to their riverside cottage when they swap homes with their daughter Sammy and her boyfriend Matt. They live just up the road at Velo Cottage. 
Once they get next door, they'll be decorating like demons to completely transform a room there. They've got two days, £500, and the skill of top interior designers Linda Barker and Graham Wynn to make sure they aren't left high and dry. And handy Andy Kane will be using his power tool panache and endless energy to keep them up to speed. At Millstream Cottage, Sandra and Cliff are hoping for a new look for their living room. I think we now have more simple tastes than we used to have. Um, we've sort of joined in together, I would guess. Mm, we've grown more alike, I suppose. Yes, we yes. have. Basically, I like something cottagey, but probably a little bit simpler than it is at the moment. I'm certainly off all the chintz and tiny pieces hanging around. I would really welcome a floor that is different, original, and um, probably with a touch of wood in it. <laughs> I couldn't bear it if anybody touched the stone wall, as it had, it's been here since 1610. Yes. And um, also my open fire. I do like an open fire. I think I trust Sammy and Matt to uh, be sympathetic to my, uh, my taste. I'd really trust her to uh, do something sympathetic to me, I think. <laughs> well, I guess we would. Well, I guess we we'll would, We'll keep yeah. the fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can but hope. Over at Velo Cottage, daughter Sammy and boyfriend Matt are unhappy with their living room. One well, of the main things I don't like about this room is, like, it's the colours in it, cos uh, since we've moved in, we've done absolutely nothing with it at all. It's just stayed as it is. The borders, so the carpet. The carpet, definitely. Uh, the curtains, I don't particularly like anymore. There's not a lot, really, that I do like about it, except for, like, new furniture we've brought in. My style is, I'd say, very... Countryfied. Uh, countryfied versus, like, Ikea. Um, if I could have more country pictures and horse pictures, the whole house would be dominated by horse pictures everywhere and definitely a riding theme through the house, but I'm only allowed a certain amount and I'm not allowed anymore. The moment I walked through this room, the thing that I would dread would just be confronted with a big horse picture, you know, a horse's head or a horse or any more horses that is actually in this room at the moment would be the worst Quite nightmare. Slight. No, I do not like horses that much. So, bags are packed, that means you can't go back now for the next two days. And apart from living close together, you're apparently a very close family, so there should be no problem with taste. <laughs> OK? <laughs> the designers don't know what your tastes are or your neighbours, so make sure you keep them informed. You better go off and meet them. Off you go. Right. Okay. Oh, top well, of keys. Best of <laughs> That's important See you too. Later. See you later. Bye. 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 And I get to keep a close eye on any would-be family.